Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, we all love doggies, right? They're so cute, even when they're puppies, they're just adorable. So today it's all about the doggies because we're gonna be playing a game that's one to four players from Renegade Game Studios called Doggy Go. It's sort of a simultaneous real-time sort of puzzle building game. Uh, and today we're gonna be doing a rule school. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a one minute overview. Then I'm gonna teach you how to set up and play the game rule for rule so that you don't have to read the rules and you can enjoy the game quicker. Let's take a look. Doggy Go is a one to four player game where you're trying to mimic what some of these cards are in your own tableau, but you're doing it as fast as you can and at the same time as everyone else, it's sort of like a race. In any given round, you're working to try to quickly and be the first one to recreate any one of the three pictures here. Some of them have different colored cards and they might have different types of scoring numbers. So you'll be quickly trying to recreate the picture in front of your own tableau by using the different equipment cards and the different dogs in both orientation and side. Over the course of the game, if you're the quickest, you'll be getting these cards for points at the end of the game. You'll also be trying to collect sets of three different colors for bonus points and possibly also having the most of any one color for bonus points. To set up, give each player one of all these cards. A stage card that says go, the green beach ball, the pink beach ball, the pink trapeze, and the flaming hoop. Any cards not being used if you're playing with less than four players can be put back in the box. Each player will also get one of each of these seven dogs. They get a Dachshund, the French Bulldog, the Sheba, the Welsh Corgi, the Schnauzer, the Taiwan Native Dog, and the Poodle. And like the start cards, if there's less than four players, you can put the dogs that are not used back in the box. Finally, you'll take these double-sided acrobat cards, the entire deck, and you'll shuffle them and get ready to use them. The whole deck gets used regardless of the number of players. To start the game, the oldest player will take three cards that are from the top of this deck and flip them over so that there's three doggy acrobat cards here. Then everybody at the same time will scream, doggy go, and the game will start. What you're trying to do is create on your own tableau, one of these three images. Now this is happening simultaneously and as fast as you can because you're trying to be the first player to complete the round. Now let's say I was just going after this card. Again, you can look and try to go after any of the three that are out there, but I brought this one closer in the frame you could see. Let's just say I'm planning on trying to be the first one to complete a card and this is the one I've selected. We would simultaneously try to build my little tableau to look exactly like this card. When I'm done, it might look something like this. Now, as you can see, I used my stage card, which has the go on it to place the dog, and I have to place it exactly in the right orientation. This would not be correct, because if you look at this card closely, the black little ones are on the bottom and on the right. These three are like this again. Now, these dogs are double-sided, right? So you're going to have to find the right dog. You're going to have to find the right orientation and line them all up. Now, the, the proximity to these different cards doesn't have to be perfect, as long as you have the poodle here, there, then you have the right dogs essentially where they're going they're all in the right locations uh, you're trying to be the first one to get it to look like this now again other players are simultaneously trying to do this at the same time either on this card or on the other cards anyone's going for any card that they want of the three that were for this round as soon as someone thinks they have a card down they're going to yell doggy goal g-o-a-l and they're going to touch the acrobat card they're trying to get done so it might have looked like this and I would have finished and I would have said doggy goal and I would have tapped this card and everyone would have looked to see did I actually do it correctly. Well, one of two things is going to happen. I'm either going to get it correct or I'm going to get it incorrect. If I did get it correct, as we see here, I get to place this card in front of me uh, for scoring points. This is going to be worth six points at the end of the round. I would then take the two cards that I wasn't going for and I would put them together and just put them in a discard pile off to the side. I would then flip over three new cards and get ready as soon as the third one's out, we would yell doggy go and start a new round. But if I was incorrect, like let's say I had these two dogs swap, they were in the wrong spot, and or this one is has a wrong orientation. If even one thing is wrong, I did not get the card. First, if you already have scored a previous card, maybe I did this in a previous round, any one of the cards that you get to choose uh, has to get removed from your score pile in front of you. You would take one of those cards and you would place it either side up on the bottom of the draw pile. That player that got it wrong would then take all three cards for that round, put them in a separate discard pile, flip over three no cards, we'd yell doggy go, and we would start a new round. If when setting up a new round, 
If there are not enough cards to completely fill it up to three cards, as here, you will take the entire discard pile, you will shuffle it to create the new draw pile, and then place out the third card. Now the game will end the second time through this draw pile. As we just saw, when it runs out the first time, we shuffle the discards and put them in there. And the second time through that draw pile, when you are trying to fill it up and it cannot be filled, well, this will be the last round of the game. Each player will then score by counting up all the scoring numbers on all the cards they've collected over the game. In this case, I add up all my numbers and I have 38 points. Then, for each set of three different colored cards you have, you get another three points. So this set of three colored different cards is three points, and this set of three different colored cards is three points. So that's another six points. So now I would have 44. Also, any player that has the most of the same colored cards also would get five bonus points. In this case, I don't, but let's look at someone else's tableau that might. So let's say this player is scoring. First, they would count up all of their numbers, and they would have 46. Then they have one set of three different, so that's three more, so that's 49. And they happen to have the most of any one color. Let's say they have four yellows, and nobody else has at least four of any color. They would get an extra five points. Now, if somebody else also had four of any other color, and that was the most, neither of them would get those five points. After adding up all those bonuses, whoever has the most is the winner. Well, I hope you enjoyed that overview and the rules and allowed you to jump right in without reading the rules. Now, the game is for one to four players. There's no specific special rules for one solo player. You just essentially play it by yourself and just have fun creating the puzzles as fast as you can. And if you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them as quick as we can. Yeah. <laughs>